What's the best way to recover from a meet I just had? Um, or kind of get back into training. Uh, how long should I take off? Those kinds of things. Um, and this is something I fucked up for years because I would typically train, or I'm sorry, compete kind of towards the end of summer. Um, and then my throwers would come back when school started, which was the end of August. Um, so I'd basically do my meet and then come right back in and start in some of my, probably my hardest training of the year, um, unless I was getting ready for the meet. So it was kinda, kinda meet, did, got ready for the meet, did the meet, and then it was like I was getting ready for another meet because a lot of times I would jump in and train with those guys and, uh, you know, they were coming into their hard part of training for the year. And, uh, you know, I couldn't let them fucking one-up me. So I would die right back in uh, with those guys and try to push like hell. Um, which is weird. It always seemed like, and I don't know if this is because my mental state was better because I was training hard. But it seemed like a lot of the the athletes training kind of went as mine did like if I was training well and doing a good job it seemed like they kind of followed suit but like I said that could be complete bullshit just because I felt better about things because I was training hard um but so don't do what I did um Dave's talked about taking a month and not putting a bar in your hands or on your back I think that's a pretty good idea um the longest I've been able to make it with that, I made it two weeks. So, and I do feel like that helped um, getting some of that compression off your body and stuff. So that was a good idea. That helped. Um, like, if you you're, if you take a month and don't squat with a bar on your back, you're not going to lose. You'll be fine. You know, do belt squat, do something else. It's not going to. It's not. It's probably in the long run, it's going to help you. You're not going to lose as much strength as uh, as you think. I think a lot of times we get pretty OCD about this stuff. Um, and especially if you've been training for quite a while, you know, I think you're going to hold on to your strength longer. Um, so take some time off. Do some, do some different stuff. Do some training you wouldn't normally do. Um, and that's not to say go do CrossFit, but... Maybe just try different exercises you normally wouldn't do because, you know, it, when you're getting ready for the meet, you know you have your go-to stuff that, have, that has to be in there. Get away from that shit and do something different. You know, you might find some new uh, go-to stuff. Um, I don't always do this, but I think it's a good idea to go, when you get back from the meet, probably that week, go get some soft tissue work done, like a whole kind of whole body overhaul. Um because more than likely something's wound up or kind of messed up from the meat or getting ready for the meat. Try to get that taken care of. Um, so it's kind of, you know, what works for you, what's going to get you back to normal. Um, but I always like Cairo, soft tissue work works well for me. Um, so, yeah, come back from the meat. Try not to think about training too much. You know, you've probably been obsessed with lifting for the past fucking you know 20 weeks or whatever get away from it a little bit and kind of refresh get any nicks or dings taken care of and then um just relax a little bit don't be a fucking maniac in the gym right after your meet um we had another question uh how if i don't know the the lifters max it's basically like um beginning lifters Okay, if I don't know their max, how do I, what percentage should I use for their dynamic work? Um, don't worry about it. Just uh, help them pick a weight that they have to push on a little bit, but they still have some good snap on the bar, some good speed coming off the box, and just kind of work around that. Um, 
until you actually have a max. Um, you know, it may be, let's say it's 95 pounds. Let's say it's a collegiate female soccer player, which may have been the question actually. You know, some of the, some of them may just have a 25 on the bar, and then you can, if you want, you can wave it. So like week one 95, week two 105, week three 115, something like that, and then start over. Um, the the big point of this the speed weight for athletes is just moving the bar fast, and then once you want to start uh, so the speed speed work. Um, the percentages aren't okay. Cool, thanks, man. Shoulders good, by the way. Thank you. We're we're getting there. Um, so, like with athletes, the the main thing is just move the weight fast. Um, now, if it's really if it's way too light, you're not going to get the training effect you're looking for, right? They got to push a little bit, um, but it also shouldn't be a grinder. So until until you have an actual max, just uh, just kind of track for you know for the athletes or have them right on their cards however you do it just kind of pick a weight have them move fast okay it's not um not overly important or especially early on um you know i i was never a big fan of testing athletes when they first got back you know and everyone asked me why don't you test them on the first day one they probably haven't done much if they have done it, it probably wasn't right. So it's probably going to look pretty shitty if we test them week one. So we would usually, if I could, I'd give them like a two or three week training period to kind of get back in the, the swing of things, doing things right. You know, and that was our baseline. So if you haven't tested them yet, I mean, you can train for a few months and not take a true max. Because you got to think about it this way. What they've been doing is probably poop. So you're going to get them better with whatever you're doing as long as you're doing your movements right and your training is not a complete clusterfuck, right? So you're making a difference just by training right and uh, accelerating the bar. Whether it's 60 or 65% probably isn't going to make much difference at that point, right? So if you got to just train them for a couple months and then test them, that's fine. Um, now your pre and post results may not be as good like if I bring a, some kids in and test them day one they're going to test and look like shit right because they're not even doing it right and then when I post test the results are going to be even more dramatic because and this is similar to a functional movement screen because uh, they don't know what the fuck they're doing on day one and then I test them a couple months later. We cleaned up their squat form. They actually got stronger. Yeah, your results are going to be better, but what did you, I mean, for what? You know, so you can look better on paper. You look like a genius, and the kids look like really hard workers, right? So I, I always like to give them a couple weeks uh, breaking period, get their feet underneath them again. So don't, don't worry too much about the percentages. I got off uh, away from my point. Just have them move the bar fast. If it starts looking super easy, add a little bit of weight. That's all you got to do. Um, guy um, is a runner. He hasn't really lifted in 25 years, I think was the question. And he asked, what's the best program to start on? Um, just do something. Start easy. Um, I'd probably go three days a week. Um, I'm a biased fucking prick, so I would run a conjugate model, but it's going to be scaled way the hell back. Fuck you and fuck your elbow, grony. <laughs> um, so just scale everything way back, like kind of like I just said, anything you do is going to be an improvement. So just, you know, 
maybe you're box squatting with a bar and doing body weight reverse hyper and three sets of abs and a back uh, your warm-up stuff some mobility work and then you're out of there right that might be like your first day you know three sets of ten on box squat with a bar might be your max effort lane and that might fucking smoke you if you haven't trained in 25 years you know and then um, upper body could be the same thing warm up some mobility stuff on your shoulders um, some dumbbell press train some back train some shoulders train some abs because you want to train abs every day um, a lot of upper back most runners I know their posture isn't very good so you're gonna want to really uh, go after the upper back but if you just follow like the normal template that'll take care of itself the work's been done just plug the shit in and uh, whatever you're putting in adjust to your population so just do something do something easy start off really easy and work your way up um, I think people get impatient you know like they're fucking getting ready for a meet you know take your time let, uh, let yourself progress a little bit without kicking the shit out of yourself so then when it's time to fucking get ready then you can get ready So yeah, if you're just starting, you know, start off easy, build it up over time slow, and it's going to help. It's, it's going to be, uh, it'll make a bigger difference than you think. You really, the, the biggest thing you'll see is if you're doing stuff right, you'll start feeling better after like a couple weeks. Like a lot of the aches and pains that kind of go away, you're going to start notice you're moving better. Like if you're a runner, you might... Um, running's gonna feel easier uh, like yeah you can run to get in shape but people don't realize running can really kick the shit out of you so you almost need the you almost need the lifting to kind of counteract the fucking pounding you're putting on yourself with all the running alright I'm at the gym so I'm gonna get the fuck out of here